Professor, Associate Professor Heil Kim. He is a uh, uh, Associate Professor in the KAIST. And his talk uh, will be the serotonin determ determines the adult beta cell mass by regulating beta cell proliferation during the perinatal period. Uh, welcome, Dr. Kim, and please give a big hand for the Professor Kim. Uh, uh, thank you for kind introduction and thank you uh, for inviting me and uh, sharing my data. Uh, so my lab, my lab is basically work on the beta cell and and we we actually I actually identify the robust serotonin production in the beta cell during uh, and the, during the pregnancy and then we've been studying uh, working on the this, uh, serotonin for last 12 years and so the the, the project I'm I'm gonna. Uh, the data I'm going to uh, present to you today is uh, what we have been done over 12 years to knock out serotonin production in the beta cell. And let me uh, quickly uh, start with the introduction of a beta cell. Beta cell is the uh, uh, pancreatic islet is located in the, in the islet. Uh, there are many different endocrine cells in the islet, but the beta cell is uh, covers about 70% of uh, endocrine cells in pancreatic islet. Um, um, everybody know about the beta cell, but but the, recently we uh, we we start to define the mature beta cell more accurately. So by functionally and genetically, so functionally mature beta cells can uh, respond can sense the blood glucose level and then secret the insulin in response to uh, blood glucose. Then and uh, when the blood glucose level goes down, they can stop secreting, secreting insulin. And the other way we identified uh, identified mature beta cell is genetically shown in here. Uh, a lot of uh, these genes are allowed to be expressed in the beta cell, and these are pre uh, the the progenitor markers are not allowed to be expressed in the beta cell. And the other importance of beta cell is a beta cell is quite important in development of diabetes. Whatever region, the any any kind of uh, diabetes. Uh, when they develop diabetes, uh, should accompany with the beta cell failure, whatever, regarding is, regardless of insulin resistance or gestation or all Im immune attack. So, for example, uh, the type 1 diabetes, at some point, autoimmune attack start to kill the beta cell, then the beta, uh, the, uh, the, the, our body lose the uh, beta cell mass somehow, then they start to, uh, uh, the clinical uh, symptoms. And type 2 diabetes is more complex. At some point, you developed uh, insulin resistance, but the, this insulin resistance uh, in, uh, increased the uh, insulin demand of the body, and the beta cell can compensate this uh, uh, increased insulin resistance by producing more uh, insulin, uh, producing more insulin, and secret more insulin. At the same time, beta cells start to increase their mass to compensate uh, uh, insulin resistance more. But at some so while these beta cells can compensate uh, uh, insulin resistance, w the blood glucose level did not really go up. Only insulin levels goes up. But at some point, beta cells are failed to uh, compensate insulin resistance anymore. Then beta cells, uh, then blood glucose levels quickly goes up, and then beta eventually beta cells die. So we call this beta cell failure. So to understand this uh, more uh, mechanism on how we can uh, or, or regenerate the beta cell or how we can maintain the beta cell mass to, to compensate the insulin resistance, we need to know more about the uh, normal physiology of beta cell. And so uh, uh, well, the beta cell uh, differentiation, if beta cells originally developed from the gut endoderm, gut endoderm cells uh, give rise to the primary endocrine cell, then give rise to the secondary uh, pancreatic progenitor cells. These secondary progenitor cells are proliferating a lot during the secondary transition. And during this secondary transition, some uh, subset, of, subset of cells are uh, expressing neurogenin-3 very transiently. These, are, these neurogenin-3 uh, expressing cells give rise to the, all, the, all uh, different kinds of endocrine cells, mostly beta cells. And, but the, nowadays, these beta cells, we, we, we call these cells uh, sort of a premature beta cell. These insulin producing beta cells that cannot, is not really mature beta cell because they did not secrete insulin in response to glucose. They just produced insulin. And then 
during the uh, uh, lactation period, beta cells become mature and eventually uh, mature beta cells which can secrete insulin in response to glucose. At the same time, the beta cells are perinatally uh, proliferate a lot to achieve the adult beta cell mass. So this uh, more, uh, in, in terms of uh, quantitatively shown here, so beta cells have become uh, uh, differentiated from progenitor cells and proliferate a lot during perinatally, and they be and then achieve the adult beta cell mass. These adult beta cell mass maintain uh, pretty much uh, entire life. And uh, when the uh, type two uh, insulin resistance developed, beta cells uh, in increase their mass to compensate the insulin resistance, or and also the other uh, uh, situation is um, a pregnancy. A pregn during the pregnancy, oh, actually the maternal body uh, physiologically develops insulin resistance to, uh, to send the nutrient to the fetus. Then uh, beta cells proliferate a lot during the pregnancy to compensate this uh, physiological insulin resistance. And then after delivery, the beta, beta cell message quickly uh, shrink to the uh, uh, pre-pregnancy level. So shown here, two things are um, uh, interesting is um, the pregnancy and perinatal period are two physiological conditions we can notice the uh, pretty much uh, uh, massive beta cell proliferation. Uh, let me uh, quickly introduce about the serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter which is uh, produced from uh, essential amino acids, tryptophan. And the uh, tryptophan hydroxylation is rate limiting step of these uh, whole pathways. And there are two uh, TPH in a human body, TPH1 and TPH2. And uh, serotonin cannot cross the BBB. So these two, uh, also uh, TPH1 and TPH2 are expressed mutually exclusively. TPH1 in peripheral tissue and TPH2 in uh, central nervous system. So these two serotonin system is functionally uh, separated. And most people think the uh, uh, serotonin is a neurotransmitter, so it is in the brain. But actually, more than 95% of serotonin is produced in enterocarotene cells in the gut and stored in the uh, platelet. And uh, uh, plasma free serotonin level is very low. And these serotonins are bind to the receptors and activate the G protein, which is the, so these all, most of these receptors are GPCR. And except for serotonin 3 receptor, which is uh, non selective cation channels. And we, we firstly identify the serotonin. Uh, usually, people think we don't really detect serotonin production in any other peripheral tissues. But all of a sudden, uh, we identified uh, serotonin, massive serotonin production in the pancreatic beta cell during pregnancy, shown in here. And then we identified uh, the, the functional load of this serotonin in the darling perinatal, is shown in here that there is robust TPH on, uh, expression of TPH on, uh, in the uh, pancreatic islet in the perinatal uh, pregnancy, which is quite important to maintain the normal glycemic control. And also this serotonin production is uh, uh, happening in the human too, so which is very important rodent in human. And this serotonin uh, regulate the beta cell proliferation through the serotonin 2B receptor during uh, pregnancy, shown here in cartoon here. So during the pregnancy, Placenta, lactogen, and proactin induced uh, the TPH1 expression in the, in the beta cell to produce serotonin, and then this serotonin bind to the serotonin 2B receptor during mid gestation induced beta cell proliferation. And at the end of gestation, uh, serotonin bind to the uh, serotonin 1B, 1D receptor and uh, induced uh, a beta cell apoptosis to, uh, to shrink the beta cell mass to the pre pregnant level. And also, uh, the serotonin induced, induced uh, uh, insulin secretion uh, during perinatal uh, pregnancy through the serotonin 3 receptor. And, uh, and then we start to think about what's going on in the uh, beta, uh, perinatal beta cells. Because um, uh, then we looked at actually uh, perinatal beta cells also produce serotonin. And then the first question we have is, um, did the 5-HT regulate the beta cell proliferation perinatally. So we looked at it. So TPH1 expression uh, peak at the P0 in the pancreatic beta cells. And also we saw the very robust serotonin staining in the P0 and, and fade away right after uh, the, uh, the first week. And also human too. 
shown in here, very, uh, there's a very robust uh, uh, serotonin uh, staining here in around the perinatal period. So we, uh, we knock out the TPH1 in beta cells. So we generate the TPH1 uh, flux to mice and, uh, and cross them with the insulin cream ice to generate the beta cell specific TPH1 shown here. So we, the serotonin production is completely uh, disappeared in perinatal beta cell and pregnant beta cell. These beta cells, are, uh, we just uh, confirmed whether these beta cells are de different, uh, developed uh, properly or not. So we just looked the uh, stain, the uh, mature be uh, little beta cell market, NKX 6.1 and PDX1 shown here. Their uh, staining pattern is completely compatible to wild type control, suggesting that they are uh, normal. And then we measure the beta cell mass and, and the link uh, at P0 shown here. So the uh, ins insulin in green and uh, amylase in uh, red shown here. There's a robust uh, reduction of beta cell area in uh, perinatal period in TPH1, uh, beta cell specific TPH1 knockout mice. And then we measured a beta cell proliferation at P0 shown here. post poison 3 and KI67 both uh, uh, expressions are robustly decreased, suggesting that the beta cell proliferation is robustly decreased in this uh, TPH, beta cell specific TPH1 knockout mice. So summary here, 5 uh, HTH produced in beta cells and induced beta cell proliferation during perinatal period and deletion of a TPH1 in beta cell resulting in the reduction of uh, beta cell mass by more than 50%. The next question is, um, these uh, perinatal beta cell proliferation can affect, uh, whether they can affect uh, adult beta cell mass or not. So we looked at uh, adult phenotype shown here. So these mice are growth normally and they don't develop any insulin resistance, but uh, uh, they are uh, glucose intolerant in the adult and their insulin secretion is uh, slightly uh, impaired in here. So uh, uh, high normally high, glu uh, high glucose uh, always uh, stimulates insulin secretion, but these beta cells just did not really uh, respond very well to the uh, high glucose uh, challenge. And beta cell mass also uh, almost uh, similar with the perinatal is shown here. So adult beta cell mass is already uh, uh, decreased by more than 50%. But however, their beta cell proliferation in adult islet is compatible with the control, suggesting these beta cell reduction of beta cell, adult beta cell mass is result from the reduction of perinatal beta cell proliferation. And the other thing I mentioned early is um, uh, beta cells always uh, uh, proliferate to compensate the insulin resistance. So if we so we put these animals in the metabolic stress to whether these uh, the beta cells that behave same similarly with control mice or not. So shown here, high fat diet, uh, all, uh, we use the high fat diet, all uh, S961, which is known as an uh, insulin receptor antagonist. So high fat diet and uh, S961 uh, uh, administration give the, uh, show the very similar uh, result. But however, the beta cell proliferation, uh, I, I think I showed it here. So usually beta cell proliferation around 1%, but S961 uh, administration induced, uh, shown here, about uh, quite robust uh, beta cell proliferation here, about 14% of beta cells are proliferating. But these are uh, active proliferation is still maintained in TPH1 beta cell knockout mice, suggesting that these uh, TPH1 no beta cells can respond to somehow uh, uh, metabolic stress to induce the beta cell proliferation. Then our next question is, what is the downstream receptor to regulate the beta cell proliferation during perinatally? And we looked at the uh, 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 serotonin receptor expression. Actually, we know the, uh, there are serotonin 1B, 1D, 2A, 2B, 3 receptors are majorly expressed in beta cell from our previous study, and then we'll compare this expression pattern the uh, from the, uh, the neonate uh, from fetus to, uh, fetus to uh, perinatally, and shown here, and then we noticed that uh, there is a robust uh, uh, induction of serotonin 1B and uh, 2B receptors in uh, perinatal period. 
Then we know that the serotonin 2B receptor is responsible for the beta cell proliferation during uh, pregnancy. So we looked, we knock out serotonin 2B receptor first. Well, before that, we actually tested serotonin 1B, 1D receptor, but their phenotype is completely uh, normal. So, and then here, showing here, serotonin 2B receptor, beta cell specific knockout mice, their uh, uh, proliferation, uh, shown here, post post histone 3, their level is uh, lobostally reduced in the uh, uh, HTR2B beta cell specific knockout. Accordingly, their beta cell mass is also uh, very uh, lobostally reduced by more than 50%. And their uh, differentiation is completely normal. And, and they became, uh, 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 became diabetic and, uh, in, in the adult. And also, they have some uh, insulin defect in insulin secretion. And then they, they growth is completely normal, but the adult beta cell mass is also uh, decreased in by more than 50%. And these phenotypes exactly phenocopy the, the TPH1 beta cell specific knockout mice, suggesting the serotonin production from the uh, beta cell to uh, bind to the uh, serotonin 2B receptor and uh, regulate the beta cell proliferation during perinatally. And then next question we have is uh, what is the upstream of serotonin? So uh, I mentioned earlier so during uh, the pregnancy, prolactin or placenta lactogen induced, uh, induced uh, uh, TPH1 expression. So we uh, first looked at uh, prolactin receptor knockout shown here. So prolactin receptor knockout, beta specific knockout mice, they still uh, have 5 HD production in the perinatal uh, beta cell. Then we looked at uh, downstream target of a uh, prolactin receptor of uh, uh, downstream target of production receptor, step five. So step five, beta specific knockout, they lose serotonin production, which is suggesting that we, uh, uh, the, the tip, upstream of TPH1 is not the production receptor, but it's upstream of step five. Then we can easily imagine that the growth hormone could be a, uh, the best, tar uh, the first candidate for this uh, upstream gene. So we knock out the growth hormone receptor in the beta cell shown here. So the uh, GHR beta cell specific knockout mice did not produce serotonin perinatally. And we looked at uh, the, uh, the beta cell proliferation, all these animals shown here. So control and uh, proactive receptor knockout mice, they still proliferate a lot very well. But step five and GHR beta cell specific knockout mice did not pro proliferate anymore. And uh, the GHR uh, growth hormone, uh, GHR beta cell specific knockout mice, their uh, proliferation rate is uh, decreased and beta cell mass decreased perinatally. So the, our conclusion is a growth hormone uh, bind to the growth hormone receptor and activate the step five and induce the uh, TPH1 expression to produce serotonin. Then we uh, and then serotonin uh, bind to serotonin 2B receptor, autocrine or paracrine manner, and induce the beta cell proliferation during perinatally, which is very. Then uh, this beta cell mass is quite important to the determine, determining whether these people are more vulnerable to uh, diabetes or not. So all of this work uh, is uh, a lot of uh, people in, in my lab work, uh, work together. And also three uh, uh, graduate students, uh, actually four, including me, uh, worked, uh, were, uh, has been working on this project. So the, uh, uh, so, uh, all of three of these graduate students are somehow related with the Seoul National University. First one, actually, the graduate student who, uh, uh, who generated TPH1 flux mice in Korea in, in my lab, he is now uh, in the, uh, 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 the uh, residency in internal medicine in Seoul National University Hospital, and and also the second graduate student who really uh, back across the mice and generate the tip beta cell specific, specific TPH1 knockout mice. Youngi is actually finished the uh, residency training here, and right now now he is uh, uh, the fellow in uh, uh, Samsung Medical Center, and a third one who actually uh, lap it up. Uh, put together all these data and finishing the, this project, the Juno is the, he's a, uh, my graduate student and he also finished his residence training at Seoul National University. And all the other people uh, helped to help me to finish this project and then trying to wrap it up and submit it soon. And with that, I'm gonna stop here and thank you for your attention.
Purpose game. Uh, uh, thank you for your nice scenario.